Evaluate the triple integral over d of 4xy dv, where d is the solid region bounded by z is equal to 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 7, and z is equal to 1. And we're going to use cylindrical coordinates here. So we want to start by considering the solid region d. So we want to consider the solid region d in three dimensions. And looking at what we're given here, we know that it's bounded by this paraboloid. z is equal to 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 7. And this plane, z is equal to 1. So we know that this paraboloid is going to be the lower bound. And our plane is our upper bound. And so if we think about a sketch of this, we know that the paraboloid is below, and so this is z is equal to 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 7. And then above this plane, or excuse me, above this paraboloid is the plane. This is representing z is equal to 1. And so we are looking for the volume of this solid. is d. So, again, we can see we know that z is going to be greater than or equal to 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 7, but less than or equal to 1. And since we know we want to convert to polar coordinates here in two dimensions, I'm going to set this up here. I'm going to factor a 2 out of x and y. So we have 2 times x squared plus y squared minus 7 is less than or equal to z less than or equal to 1, and we can replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. So we have 2r squared minus 7 is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to 1. So from here, we want to now consider the two-dimensional region or the projection of this solid into the xy plane. We want to consider r in two dimensions. And again, we'll keep in mind here that this is the projection or the shadow cast by d into the xy plane. So if we're working in the xy plane in two dimensions here, we of course know that z is going to be equal to 0. Because in the xy plane, we only have the x and y coordinates. So to find this two-dimensional region, we're going to go ahead and equate the surfaces. We equate the surfaces or equal the surfaces and simplify. So we have z is equal to z which allows us to rewrite this as 2x squared plus 2y squared minus 7 is equal to 1. And so simplifying this, we'll bring all our constants to the right-hand side. So I have 2x squared. Actually, let's factor that 2 out. So we have 2 times x squared plus y squared is equal to uh, 1 plus 7, which gives us 8. And then dividing both sides here, by 2, 2 divided by 2 gives us 1, and we are left with our good old friend here, the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4 squared, or not 4 squared, equals 4, which is 2 squared. So this is a circle centered at the origin, with a radius of 2. And so we'll use this to define the bounds on r and theta. So again, if you want, you could sketch yourself a little picture to confirm. Here's our circle in r2. My x and y axis. So here is the two-dimensional region of integration r. And we know we have a radius of 2. It's also centered at the origin, which lets us know 
that our radius is going to be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2, and that since this is a complete circle, that theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. And so we're now ready to go ahead and set up the triple integral. We'll give ourselves lots of room here. So we want to set up the triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. Again, we were given right off the bat, we have this triple integral over d of 4xy dv. So we'll let the outer bounds be theta. That's from 0 to 2 pi. The middle integral is our radius, which is 0 to 2. The inner integral is z, which was 2r squared minus 7 to 1. And then we have 4xy, and our differential, this is going to be r dz dr d theta. And at this point, we check that we have remembered our differential. And we also look at the variables that this differential tells us we're integrating with respect to, which reminds us that, hey, we've got too many variables. We're going to need to rewrite x and y as polar coordinates. So this becomes... the integral from 0 to 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 2r squared minus 7 to 1 of 4 multiplied by r cos of theta multiplied by r sine theta times r dz dr d theta. And we'll simplify this a little bit before we continue. Again, 0 to 2 pi, 0 to 2, 2r two squared minus 7 to 1 of 4. And we have 3r, so that's 4r cubed cos theta sine of theta dz dr d theta. Phew. So now we're ready to start evaluating. And we're going to start here with our inner integral, z. So notice, looking at this integrand, we have no z, so all of this is just a constant. All of this integrand here is constant, so we can pull this right to the outside of our integral. 4r cubed sine of theta cosine of theta of the integral from 2r squared minus 7 to 1 dz. And so this integrates, we have r cubed sine of theta cosine of theta z from 2r squared minus 7 to 1. So evaluating, we have this 4r cubed um, cosine of theta sine of theta Evaluating this is going to be 1 minus 2r squared minus 7. Use your parentheses for safety here to remind yourself that this negative gets distributed to both terms. So I have 4 sine of theta cosine of theta r cubed. I moved that r cubed forward because I know that we want to integrate with respect to r next. Distributing that negative, I have 1 minus 2r squared plus 7. So we can combine up our like terms here. We can also distribute that r cubed. So this is going to be, I'll do this in one step here. We have This will become 8 minus 2r squared. And I'm now going to take this r cubed and distribute it through so we're ready to integrate in our next step. So we have 4 sine of theta, cosine of theta, multiplied by 8r cubed, 
minus 2r to the fifth. So this is our inner integral's value. And we're now ready for the middle integral. So that is the integral from 0 to 2. And actually, let's pull all of that theta here, on, or the, the trig functions to the outside, because those are constant. I have 4 sine of theta, cosine of theta, of the integral from 0 to 2 of 8r cubed minus 2r to the fifth dr. And we're ready to integrate here. So this is equal to 4 sine of theta cosine of theta multiplied by, we're going to have 8r to the fourth by 4 minus 2r to the sixth by 6, evaluating from 0 to 2, and so we can simplify before we evaluate. Of course, know that 4 goes into 8 2 times, and that 2 goes into 6 3 times. So see, we're left here with 4 sine of theta, cosine of theta, multiplied by 2 r to the 4th, minus 1 3rd r to the 6th, from 0 to 2. So this is 4 sine of theta, cosine of theta, and we're plugging in 2 first. So we have 2 multiplied by 2 to the 4th, which is 16, minus 1 3rd, multiplied by 2 to the 6th, which is 64. And then thank goodness our lower bound is 0. So we're going to plug 0 in everything goes to zero. So we have, this is equal to four sine of theta, cosine of theta, multiplied by two times 16 gives us 32, minus 64 thirds. So we're gonna get that common denominator here. So multiplying our first term by three. We have four sine of theta, cosine of theta, So 96 minus 64 all over 3. We need more room. Which leaves us with 4 sine of theta, cosine of theta, multiplied by 32 thirds. And we'll pull these constants to the front so we have 4 times 32, which leaves us with 128 over 3. Sine of theta, cosine of theta. And actually, let's pause for a cause here, because looking at this middle integral's value here, we realize that we're not going to be able to directly evaluate in terms of theta with what we're given here. So it might actually be easier to go back to our previous step here to identify the trig identity, which you may have seen earlier, but we certainly need to apply it now. So looking here at, we have four sine of theta, cosine of theta. We recall the double angle formula. And we know, of course, that two sine of theta times cosine of theta is equal to sine of 2 theta, which would be a general antiderivative. So again, I'm using, I'm rewriting this step here for simplicity. So we can rewrite that as 2 multiplied by 2 sine of theta, cosine of theta, multiplied by 32 thirds. So we have 2 times 32, which leaves us with 64 thirds. And then that 2 sine of theta cos of theta becomes sine of 2 theta. So we're going to use this instead of our previously box solution, because this will produce a general antiderivative 
being easy to evaluate. So last but not least here, we're ready to evaluate the outer integral to get our final answer. And this is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 64 thirds sine of 2 theta d theta. So you have 64 thirds multiplied by a minus cosine of 2 theta divided by 2 from 0 to 2 pi. So we can rewrite this as minus 32 thirds times cosine of 2 times 2 pi, so that's 4 pi minus cosine of 0. So we have cosine of 4 pi goes to 1, cosine of 0 goes to 1, leaving us with negative 32 thirds multiplied by 1 minus 1, which is 0. So we have 32 thirds multiplied by 0, leaving us with 0. And so this is our final answer.